Hello, good day and welcome. I'm your host, Mr. Steve, and this is episode eight, season four of the Point 99 podcast. It's been a busy week in the world of running across the whole world, it would seem, but especially here in Bonnie, Scotland. It appears that there were three big main drawing events taking place over the course of the weekend. We'll get swiftly around to each of those right after this, the intro. For those new or unfamiliar with the show, The Point 99 Podcast is a running podcast for all runners of all abilities, but especially the everyday runners out there. If you're new to running or to the podcast, we hope to have guests, topics and discussions that will help you along whatever path your journey is taking. For any seasoned runners or listeners, perhaps we'll have some stories that will have you empathising with our experiences and predicaments. If it's lessons we've learned during our own journeys, embarrassing stories or heartstring pulling moments, we hope you'll stick with us while we try to share some good vibes, motivation and positivity, and hopefully we can have a laugh along the way. In an effort not to overrun time-wise like I did in the last episode, I'm going to try and speed my way through as much as possible before we get to this week's guest. Ain't going to lie though, I'm not entirely confident the interview was anywhere near up to scratch this week as I was a big old nervous Nelly talking to this fella. Maybe it was his dashingly handsome looks, his buttery smooth northern accent or the fact he's something of a celebrity to someone like myself who has listened to him weekly for the past few years. Whatever the reason, I will apologise in advance for any inconsistencies in this week's interview. I'm all over the shop like a ping pong ball at a particular kind of show that you might find down in Bangkok. Nevertheless, let's look at what the community have been getting up to, the answers to this week's question and my very own digest on how the Inverness Half Marathon panned out on Sunday. First up, we'll do some shout outs for events. Ben Fullerton, the main man at the top of the Mount Vernon runners, was in the question box with his cracker. He said we was unofficially pacing the Inverness Half Marathon. Yeah, about that. This cheeky chap right here, well, he may have been perving on Ben's shoes as well as finding his pace steady and comfortable enough to sit on his shoulder for a couple of the sections to direct the race. I did have the decency though to thank the man once we were done though, at which point Ben realised who I was from the sound of my voice. It gave me the perfect opportunity to speak to such a friendly bloke and nerd out about running shoes and podcast land. Good on you Ben, cracking result, even if you did beat me by two seconds in the end after thinking we were matching our times to the exact second. Also in attendance, we had one half of my Hobbit Height friends, the always beautiful and ever so delightful Geese on the Run. Geese was up with a good handful of the cult runners as well as her family to smash out the Inverness half, or as she put it, the capital of the Highlands. Not that they slid into the question box, but we did have Alex runs and stuff, my other pocket-sized hobbit friend, my wee Parisian pal Elodie, Big Nick McGowan Lowe, Helen running mum, Uncle Lee, and the fabulous previous guest, Sarah Homer, hitting the main streets of the Highlands and doing a fantastic job. There were a few happy faces amongst that bunch after bagging tasty PBs, as well as placeholder medals in the form of a delicious biscuit. We're heading south for our next shout. The first of the John Muir Way responses. James Gow, Jimmy Bunter, bagged himself a 47th overall, 20th in his category and a 3 hour 53 minute marathon PB. Just casually cruising there in what he noted as shite conditions. I did read a few people saying how delightful the headwind was. James also noted that he had a great dinner out with the girls, Jace, A.B., Ian runs in cycles, Big Bob Barrel and Mike Houston. That was a highlight for him. Now, neither Jace nor Mike, and I'm going to include Jim Boyle here as well, put in for the shout out this week, but they all did an amazing job at the JMW on Saturday. 
Jace even bagged his second fastest marathon. Now, given the headwind and general conditions and the terrain, he's certainly got it in him to hit his target at Edinburgh, like we were talking about a few episodes ago. If you've not heard that, listen back if you missed it. It's a great chat with a great guy. To anyone else who completed the JMW on Saturday, but who I either missed or missed the raw call themselves, you did an amazing job. Huge congratulations, but we do have a few more later on in the roll call here. Like my next shout here, another John Muir way, and it's a Highland delight in the form of the running Fran. Fran was exclaiming the John Muir Ultra with a brutal headwind. I did also see that Fran met good old Uncle Lee for a cheeky selfie as he was down cheering everyone on before he headed up the road. Good on you, Fran, smashing it even with that brutal headwind. Travelling west next for Stuart runs a lot, that he does, and down by the River 10k. Stuart grabbed himself a wee PB. Go on yourself, Stuart. A busy old affair though at Down by the River with our good pal and previous guest, Ryan Miller, who also nabbed himself a cheeky PB with a rapid average pace. A shout out to all the Camberslang Harriers who helped put on the event, but also anyone that was taking part, along with the swarm of the yellow and black Bumblebee-esque Newton Roadrunners and everyone who smashed it down by the river. Finally, we're heading back east where someone by the name of Nick Knack Ultra Runs shouts, I ran an ultra JMW in case you missed it. She absolutely did smash it with a huge smile to book crossing the finish line. I noticed there she has also changed her handle to note that she is now no longer just a marathon runner, she's an ultra runner. Such an amazing day in the office there, Nikki. Ride that wave as long as you can. Now you're an ultra sweaty club card holder. Now, I saved this man for last as he's an absolute machine. We spoke about him during Jace's episode and how rapid this man can be. And he proved it once again at the John Muir Way. Four hours on the button for 50 kilometres and a ninth place to boot. Excuse my language, but fucking hell, AB, you're some guy. I'm thinking you're a sure fire booking for the next season to A, find out what makes you tick, but B, what you're taking, if you can bottle it, and will you share it with the rest of us? That was an amazing performance and you just absolutely smashed the heck out of that one, buddy. Before we move on to the answers to this week's question, I want to first have a quick digest of my own running alongside my pals at the Inverness Half Marathon, but also give an important message on self-care after an unfortunate incident at the Allness Park Run on Saturday. Let's first start with the positives though and how my race panned out. Short answer, PB City. My times tumbled in my 15k, my 10 mile, my 20k and my half marathon. I even nabbed a second fastest 10k time casually cruising uphill to get it. Was the half marathon time the one that I set out to achieve? No. Honestly, I was upset, frustrated, annoyed, however you want to call it at first, but with over three minutes taken off my time, I can't be. It's there for the taking. The sub 90 is only one minute, 13 seconds away. Even a Strava says it's less. But when the event is measured accurately due to being the host of the Scottish Championships, I'm going to go by the chip time. Sure, I'll be frustrated at myself. I had more than enough in the tank to dig deep over the last mile and smash the sub 90, but it's just one race. There will be plenty more and I'll get there. I'm delighted though. I know I have it in me, but having the guys up as well as Hannah, Han Van Ventures and Ian Runs and Cycles there to support us, it made for a great day. Another huge positive to go by though is the fact that I finished 300th out of a very very strong field of club runners because it was the Scottish Championships. There were 2,230 runners taking part, many of whom came from quite significant large clubs from across the country so I can't be too disappointed with that one. Right on to some serious news here and something that's a little bit more distressing so a quick trigger warning if that's not for you jump on a couple of minutes but it is important that I raise this as I did have it on my profile and I know a few people were very concerned about the happenings at the Allness Park Run on Saturday. 
I don't often go down to Olness Park Run. It is my local. It's only a couple of kilometres, if that, away from the house. But I'm just lazy. I like my bed. But when Nick McGowan Lowe said he was up early for meetings and that he was going to go to either Inverness or Olness for Park Run, I couldn't miss out in a bit of Park Run tourism and helping the man out and giving him some company. But we also had Hand Van Ventures in attendance. So Nick had the perfect company as I saw an opportunity to maybe bag myself a first place at Park Run, given the diluted field, because everyone was saving themselves for the next day at the Inverness Half Marathon. Before the Park Run started, I was doing my warm up and I got talking to some really nice guys from the Kirkcaldy Wizards. I gave them a bit of a digest on the course, got a little bit of a chat about running and then left them to do the rest of their investigations themselves as I headed back up to the start. Now the start started off really well, nice and steady, but still pacey enough that I didn't feel it, but it was still within grasping distance of a 5k PB for me. All was going well. I got to the end of the pier. It was maybe about two thirds of the way back and I was sitting strong in third well within grasping distance of first if I wanted it and still going strong for the PB. But at that point, I did notice a marshal had changed. It's kind of odd that that happens. So I got closer, asked if everything's okay. And the marshal told me that there had been an incident and we were using the alternative route back. Never a good sign. Headed through, wound back a little bit, took my foot off the gas because it was more important knowing a lot of the marshals, knowing the race coordinators, that I'm there to help support them. So I made my way back, finished the race. And yeah, the, the, there was very few marshals in attendance at the finish, did what we could, helped everyone out. And it, at that point, we decided, or the race coordinators decided, we would avoid the park run. We would just get everyone back and just make sure everyone was okay. What had happened was unfortunate. Uh, one of the Kirkcaldy runners that I had been talking to pre-event had unfortunately had quite a significant heart attack early on at the run within the first kilometre. Luckily, we had a doctor on course, two nurses, the air ambulance, two ambulances and two police cars were in rapid attendance as well. We also had the race coordinator who is also trained in CPR. The man had the best chance of recovery or survival at that point, although it wasn't looking good for him. There were reports that unfortunately the man may have passed away, but thankfully at the time of recording, they managed to stabilise him, bring him back and stabilise him enough to get him to hospital. And as I say, at time of recording, he is still with us. It is a difficult topic. It is upsetting but you've got to give it some consideration. How many times have you gone for a run and you haven't necessarily felt 100%? I know I have, and I'm fit and healthy, young enough, I'd like to think, at 37, and I've gone out for a run, solo run, and I think, well, thinking about it now, anything could happen. Anything could be happening underlying. There's no shame in sitting one out and just watching from the sidelines, and it's something that I'm going to think a little bit more about as well. Self-care, recovery and just my general health. If and when I hear more about how the chap is getting on, I will share it a little bit on here maybe, but also on my own profile. Fingers crossed, all goes well and he has a speedy recovery. From the glum to something a little bit more positive and this week's question. This time around, I was asking you all about carbon plated running shoes and if the new fad for buying into the pricier side of the running shoe market had bitten you yet. I was expecting a few people to be like I was previously very hesitant about buying into it all, but others who were pleasantly surprised about how much they seem to make a difference to your running. Stuart Rowan, Stuart runs a lot that he does, was just such a guy. He said, yes, after using them at races, they're definitely the best thing he has invested in. He is, however, a bargain hunter, so doesn't always go for the latest model or he waits for an offer as they're still pretty decent. Stuart has certainly learned well from Ian Runs and Cycles who might need to buy a second home to store the number of carbon shoes that he has. I know Ian is also a bit of a bargain hunter. He's the main man when you want to get some savings. He's helped me save money on my carbon plate shoes in the past as well. Just call him David Dickinson at this point. 
I counted 17 pairs in the photo that he popped up in his stories, but he also added a bit of geekery with the fact that some of them are carbon composite, others are nylon plated, and a few are rotted numbers. If you're into running shoe porn, speak to Ian. Now Thomas TS Runs responded to Ian with a good showing himself with what looked like eight pairs. I've just started something there having a, I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Ben, the barefoot daddy, said that because he's a barefoot runner, the human body is all the tech he needs. Maybe he has some carbon plates installed and extra cushioning. I don't know about you, but I find that they help me a lot more than if I was running in my bare feet. TJ, I run for shirts and medals, responded, saying that she feels like a slow runner like herself doesn't need them. Not at all. Everyone needs to feel the blessing and the speed they can get from carbon plated shoes. At least that's my outlook anyway. Steph Runs Miles says, currently I don't have any carbon shoes, primarily because I think it would be a waste of money given my current level of fitness. I'm not good enough to justify them, but I had been thinking I may treat myself for a planned half later in the year. Luke Runshine on Leith slipped one in to say he doesn't feel that they suit his style probably for the really fast folks. Again, same as TJ, I think they benefit everyone, but it is one of those things you need to weigh up. Do you want to spend the money for the little bit of additional support, stability, speed that they can help you gain over time? The Stone Dyke Wall shitter himself, Doug Runs Saudi, is a 100% convert and he loves his alpha flies. Now, finally, we have Jimmy Bunter once again saying that he does own a pair of vapor flies and they are 100% a shoe that makes a difference to your efficiency and speed. He, however, hardly wears his though. I mean, less trails, Jimmy, and more tar. But then we've had so many ultra runners this season. I don't know if that's even going to be a thing anymore. I'm going to stay a tar lover myself and a lover of both vapor flies and alpha flies. I don't think I need to actually give my thoughts on this one. I think anyone seen my profile, seen the artwork that I came up with after Amsterdam and who was observant enough to see the footwear I had on at uh, the Inverness Half on Sunday would know my thoughts on it. But uh, good thoughts between both converts and those a little bit more hesitant. Not as many responses as I thought I might get on this one, but absolutely love the photo that Ian put up. I'll have to think about a question for episode nine. I don't have anything at the moment, but I'll get something up ready for Monday. So stay tuned for that. Okay, now on to this week's guest. And like I said at the beginning of the episode, I kind of feel that I might have messed this one up a little bit. I was really nervous throughout the whole interview, even the preamble. I was just so, so nervous. And he did come very highly recommended by his commander-in-chief, Rob Hitchmo, the main voice behind the What The Fartlek podcast. I almost want to do a re-recording on it, but it is what it is. I had a good old chat with the man himself just last night at the time of recording this part anyway. Yeah, we'll get into it. You'll hear what I mean. It's a little bit here, there and everywhere, but I enjoyed speaking to the man behind not only the editing of the What The Fartlet podcast, but previous co-host of the Football Pundit Imposters podcast, known to have the best calves in Clitheroe. It's the one and only JP Runs Free, John Pickup. Today, I have the pleasure of being joined by a man who is no stranger to the world of podcasting. Whether it's his efforts in keeping some semblance of sanity on the What The Fartlek podcast, where he has worked tirelessly in both the background and foreground of the show, or his time co-hosting the Football Pundit Imposters podcast. Being the veteran that he is, I'm hoping he'll carry this interview and make me sound good for the change, and I might even ask him to edit it. When he's not working alongside his friends, doing something that they and many, many listeners, including myself, clearly enjoy. He's torturing his mind, body, and soul at any number of running events. More often than not, in aid of an extremely worthwhile cause as a seasoned fundraiser for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. 
but I'll draw a line under the flattery in the form of mimicry that comes from an introduction style learned from listening to the WTF and get on with welcoming the man known to apparently have the best calves in Clitheroe. He comes highly recommended by his commander-in-chief, little Rob Hitchmo. It's the one and only JP.RunsFree, John Pickup. How's it getting? How's it going, That's buddy? Intro, Steve. <laughs> yeah, very well, yeah. Yeah, it's quite nice to have an intro like that, so yeah. For a change, yeah, it's not abuse you're getting shouted at you. That's it, that's it. I'm, I'm not quite used to it yet, so, you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe you can fall into that in a little bit, but yeah. I was just saying uh, to, to JP before we get started here, I'm, I'm very nervous interviewing him because he's he's a veteran compared to many of the guests I've had on so far. So this is going to be interesting, but I am looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. And like you say, it's just a chat at the end of the day. Exactly that. It's just a chat. <laughs> and you're definitely going to be leading it. I'll just interject every now and then. So <laughs> You've had a good old weekend. Uh, we've already covered that ourselves, but you had a good weekend running. Yeah, a very wet windy and quite muscle sore weekend but yeah it was good got another medal in there in the bank get a rub well, then so. no ease those muscles off get paul to give you a massage that's that chance to be a fine thing yeah <laughs> leave that to the professionals i've got a sports massage booked in tomorrow so oh, yeah, for that. that'll be good that'll be good um but i mean there's no better place to start though than to kind of talk about your history i mean we're, gonna, we're not going to be a burn the bush anyway uh, I've listened to your episode that you had on the WTF many moons ago. I want to say that was like season four. Yeah, it's a while. Season yeah, four good, or five. A couple of years now, isn't it? Yeah. Because um, there's no better way of getting information than listening to a podcast that you are a staple on. Um, but um, you kind of gave an outline then of what your background was. And it's very similar to two people we've had on this season and one another season ago. Um, you were a footballer. Uh, so can you give a little bit of background about what level you played at? Kind of, was it just youth level or was there more development? And then uh, give some idea of how that developed to the point that you're at now with running. Yeah, so f- football. Football was kind of the uh, the thing to do when I was a kid. So if, if I wasn't on the street playing uh, after school until the street lights came on and my mum told me to get in, it was you know, playing for the local teams as a kid. And uh, and the systems weren't the same as they are now. So, you know, you just played at sort of town level and, uh, and you know, you just played with your mates. So yeah. did that for, you know, for, for what seems like 25 years. Um, managed to do a little bit when I got to sort of 18, 19 and played, played a bit of semi-pro. Uh, actually getting, you know, a couple of quid to, to pull on a pair of boots was quite nice. Um, and, you know, enjoyed enjoyed my time playing football. The sort of love hate relationship we run in was always there, um, you know, throughout school and not really enjoying it and kind of cheating at cross country and stuff like that. And just, you know, wait until everyone ran back past and then joining in and looking like you've, you've worked hard. Um, and yeah, I just literally played football and didn't really run for, for anything other than chasing a football or chasing the person who had the football. So yeah. um, that, that was pretty much the background um, as as I got older, you know yourself, you play competitive sport, you, you start to get the creaks in there. Yeah. And don't bounce back the same way as you do normally when you're in your 20s. And those aches take weeks instead of days to heal. And having children and starting my own family, um, it means that having less time to get out there and play football was, was a thing. And, you know, struggling to walk downstairs the day after, you know, it's not conducive to, to seeing your kids grow up really so I had to knock it on the head and I suppose because it's not just 90 minutes for a game you've then got everything else that goes in and around it you've got your travel you've got your socializing afterwards and sure yeah. running's not qu- quite as well you still got your socializing with running but it's not quite as bad you can go out for a run and that's your hour and then you you, you can come back and seeing the kids without having a whole yeah. day yeah lost. yeah absolutely yeah a, a lot of the time especially when I was playing at the higher higher sort of levels you know it was a 10 o'clock in the morning meet for a three o'clock kickoff. Yeah. And then you, you're not getting back till six, seven o'clock. Um, but, you know, it's it's the days after where you're aching and you, you're struggling to move and then training and rinse and repeat. So, um, so I ended up knocking on the head and then I got really fat. <laughs> and there's no dressing that up at all. <laughs> and, you know, there was a point where I saw, I saw a photo of myself and I thought, whoa, what, you need to find something here. So 
you're too old to play football now, but you've got to find find something. So it, it ended up being running, and the rest is history. That's very similar actually to, to at least Ryan and I, I know Ryan Miller. You kind of have some knowledge of Ryan because he he was involved with one of the events you guys were running on on what the fart like. But his story is fairly similar. He stopped playing football, put on the pounds, and the body image was what really drove him to go. Well, I need to do something. What's the easiest thing that I could do on a football pitch anyway? And that's run. And yeah, it, it, the pounds do fall off you, especially when you get addicted to it. And you're clearly uh, adept at running. Your your times have constantly been tumbling over the last few years. Um, but you're no stranger to to throwing yourself in at the deep end with running. Um, you started in and around COVID, didn't you? I think that was that was why. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, it was just before, uh, so 2019 when I first started, and um, I'd done what loads of people do, sit there hungover normally on a Sunday morning watching <laughs> the London Marathon and thinking, I'll do that one day. Yeah. And it was never a throwaway thing. It was always, I'll, I'll run that race. And, you know, it is the race in, in my eyes. And I, I just entered the ballot, not knowing anything about it. One of my pals had just done it in 2018, and that kind of spurred me on. And um, I didn't get a blessed surprise, surprise. Um, you know, that was at one in 10, whereas now it's what, one in 20? Did you win the lottery again? instead, though? <laughs> yeah, 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 I've got more chance, definitely. Um, yeah. But as as I got the uh, the kind of entry um, form completed, said, you know, if you don't get in, why not run for a charity? And I never contemplated really, you know, I've raised money for charity, yeah. local charities before, but nothing, nothing really, you know, to, to the extent that I, that I have over the last few years. And I just saw the, the make a wish along in the list of, you know, the long list of charities for the London Marathon. And yeah, just something took my eye and I thought, I'm going to apply to them just, you know, because I definitely want to do it. So why not bite the bullet and, and jump in? And then I've been lucky enough to raise quite a bit of money for them and, uh, and run quite a few events for make a wish. And it's something that I'm really, really proud of. Um, well, but yeah, 2019, though, just going back a step. Yeah. The start was really difficult, and that love definitely wasn't there from the start. No, nowhere near. Um, you know, <laughs> absolutely running kind of balls to the wall, trying to run ten k, doing it in you know a reasonable time. But yeah. then seeing my watch, you know, nearly physically being sick and thinking, how do people run this at you know sub x amount of time? And yeah, it it was a very 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 hate hate relationship to start with. That's for sure. Well, I think what was it? I'm, trying to, I'm actually going to do a lot of reference to to having listened to your episode. Um, and you did say something about well, so your first event was like a half marathon and it was balls to the wall. But then like, was it the next week you had a marathon as well? And it was oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll just do I'll just do a half marathon. And you know what? I'll just double the distance and I'll do that next the next week. Um, it's not really the best introduction, is it, to to running to go from no distance eventing to half marathon and marathon. How did that kind of come about? Or was it kind of just off the back as well of having signed up for the charity spot for London? And how did it feel having really done no other event up to that point? Yeah, probably naive more than anything. I think, <laughs> um, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. You know, I've got to get up to the marathon distance. So why not, you know, do half the distance? Go straight for half. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was literally that. It was. It just sounded like a good idea at the time. You just don't think. No. And you know, I, I suppose because I'd I'd got to the point where uh, I, I found a plan and I'd started doing this plan and thinking, right, I need to get to the marathon. Um, and it was when London was meant to be in the the yeah. April, so I needed to know in my own head that I could do a marathon. So I thought, well, what better place to start than, than entering the Yorkshire Marathon in in the October of twenty nineteen. Is it 2019? Yeah, it will have been. Yeah, um, yeah, before it's locked down, yeah. And then, okay, well, I've got to do that, so I might as well try and do a half first and, yeah. <laughs> Jumping in with both feet, like you, like you said before, you know, you, you've got to do things. Uh, I, don't, I definitely don't do things by half, that's for sure. You certainly sound like you did something a little bit more advanced than what most people I speak to do. You actually got a plan. He didn't just go, you know, I'll just wing it. I'll just go for a couple of runs and then just turn up at the event. Yeah, fair, fair. I mean, so you, you the, the plan sounds slightly insane, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, it does. Um, 
I'm going to backtrack a little bit here because I did mention to you during that interview, you, you said a number of things. You said your background with football. Uh, you talked about the half marathon, the marathon, and you also talked about um, London being deferred because mm. of COVID. And that's a story for a lot of people. Um, but you, you did say something that made me audibly laugh very loudly. Uh, I was lucky enough to be on a, a kind of single track country road at the time, so I wasn't getting funny looks. <laughs> um, this is slightly further down your journey. So you, I think you'd done London by that point. We'll come back to that. So I want to cover um, your mental year last year, but also it's all to do with my make a wish. So we'll try and bundle that all together. Mm-hmm. You said during your interview with Rob that um, you'd done an ultra, as many of my guests this season have done. You did the Pendle Way in a day. And it was, you know what? I'm never doing that again. Never. I'm never doing that again. Uh, and you also said, I'm never going to do a marathon again. I'm just going to focus on half marathons. I'm going to perfect half marathons. And I laughed so hard at that point because obviously, no, you signed up once again for Pendle Way in a day. But then yeah. you've done how many marathons since as well? Yeah, that, that's a typical runner thing, isn't it? Yeah, I'm never doing that again. Um, I, I think Pendle's probably got its own little story. So I'm sure we'll, we'll touch on that. Mm-hmm. And some of the other guys that you've had on, on this series, I know you said that it's been ultra heavy. Mostly ultras, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm definitely not your typical ultra runner. I just ended up doing these things because I'm I'm too stubborn to say no rather than actually enjoying it. Um, <laughs> so I think that's that's half of it. But the, the reason that we got to um, doing Pendle again was actually after Berlin uh, this this September just gone. Yeah, and we'd uh, I'd finished the marathon, and we'd we'd had a few of the the large steins of beer, and uh, and me and Rob had run London earlier that year, and he, he hated it after Tower Bridge. Well, actually, yeah. as he was getting up to Tower Bridge, he, he yeah he'd gone and uh, and vowed never to run another marathon. So we were talking <laughs> about it, and I said, you know what? Actually, running ultra marathons is probably easier, and the psychology behind that, in my own view is that you, you run in a marathon for a time and yes. you know the idea is to run it and you know try and try and carry on running as, as far as you can as fast as you can um whereas the ultras the, there's a little bit more of a mental battle and it's not necessarily about time it's about getting it finished so you know i think that'd be a better idea for you because you know you, you're mentally strong and um and you don't have to run the whole thing so we you know back and forth a little bit and then I said I'll tell you what if you agree to do Pendle Way I'll do the same <laughs> and then I don't know why I, like I said it must have been the Steins of Beer so then I held my hand out to shake his hand calling his bluff that he wouldn't and then that would have been me taking the mick out of him for being soft and then he only went and shook my hand didn't he so um, yeah we, we got Matt on the phone straight away and then we, we bullied him into doing it as well so I think there's actually about 25 people from the Wow, uh, Fartlet community actually signed up to it. That's going to be a tr- more of less of an ultra run and more of a trek with the number of people. It's going to be yeah, like you're trekking yeah. it. They're all mad, <laughs> absolutely mad. <laughs> I think there's maybe a, f- a fear of missing out there as well. If you're going to do it and you've got a crowd of people, you may as well do it while you've got the support there to do it. This is very true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What they don't realise because it's actually quite local to where I live. It's it's horrific. <laughs> You so, actually mentioned that the first time uh, you said, oh, I've just been up there a couple of weeks ago and there's still snow uh, and you know, how cold it was. I mean, you did you did make a good point, though, having had Tanya Carmona on and you've had Tanya, Tanya on this season as well. She had, did make the good point of nobody asks you your time when you run a, a, yeah. an ultra marathon. But that's like the first thing people ask you when you run a marathon. What was your time? same for half marathon that's all i've had today is what was your time you don't get that in in an ultra style now i've only done ultra laps I've, I've never done a full ultra event and i do want to do one um i'm not quite as insane as you guys yet i've just not signed up for it. i'm not betting that bullet because i don't know if i could i don't know if i could really stomach it true true I, i'm not i can't say that there's there's there's, there's a story behind running this week and i'm not going to bring the, t- the tone down on this one but <laughs> uh the worst that can happen there's a lot of worse things that can happen but no hopefully i'll do it but um yeah so you, you did make a segue there to why you signed up again and it was back to berlin the berlin was part of a series of back-to-back-to-back events you did wasn't it it was 
or was Berlin maybe set separate? Yeah, but Berlin, Berlin was a few months was after. Was a few months yeah. after. Yeah. So you did all these these crazy events back to back to back, and then you did Berlin, and you did have the support of uh, what Mario and Todd uh, for one of them. Or were you? Well, like, to, yeah, Todd. Todd looked a little bit more like Aladdin, I think. But yeah, yeah, there was there was Mario, Luigi, and Aladdin <laughs> going around. Can you kind of give a reflection then, though, on on last year um, and why why what the events were, where they were, and why you were undertaking us? What I would say is an insane number of events back to back. Yeah, well, well, if you want to take a step back to to the December, so it was. Yeah. December 22 um uh we we decided to do the uh the Blackburn 10k and um and as a podcast we decided to make make a wish the charity of the year and uh you know having done a few years worth of events for them I was dead they pleased that that the guys had kind of go along with that yeah. and um and it also meant that Rob had a place at, at London with myself so you know we, we wanted to raise as much money as we possibly could for for the charity so um, it also coincided with me turning forty. I, I know I don't look it, but you I was know, gonna say you um, don't look for you look the same age as me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's um it's it's it, it, I'm still not over it, let's be honest, a year down the line. But uh but it is what it is. So um I, I, I decided just to do something a little bit out of the box because I'm I'm sure when you've spoken to other charity fundraisers, it's the next event's gotta be something bigger. Yeah. So yeah. you know. The first London that I did, I'd never run a marathon before. So great, you know, people will support you. And then, oh, he's doing another marathon. You know, the, the, there isn't the same appeal. So no. um, by this point, I'd done an ultra as well. And, you know, you, you've got to kind of carry on ramping. So came up with the, the four at 40 idea. So it uh, consisted of two half marathons and then two marathons in a, in a five-week period. And it was only five weeks. It would have been four, but Easter kind of was in there. So there was no races. So um, I did... A, quite a hilly half marathon in Sheffield. Um, then I did the London Landmarks half marathon, had a, a week off for Easter, and then it was back to back Manchester and then London. So it was quite a lot of distance covered in a in a short space of time. Yeah, you know, I think it would be nicer to have a half than a marathon than a half than a marathon. It, ah. <laughs> Again, you know, done. yeah, get, get all the big ones in. You know, <laughs> got, got to run around London twice in a month. And yeah. Fundraising wise, did it was it as successful as you you hoped? Yeah, yeah, we set ourselves a a, a pretty ambitious target of sort of five thousand, and we we ended up, um, yeah, seven and a half. I think we ended wow. up that. So, yeah, but there, there was more than just the, the you know the four events. We you made you made reference to Mario and Luigi. We um, <laughs> we we went around Blackburn Ten K, which is again very local to me, yeah. um, and that just came out of nowhere. We decided to do Movember, but kind of carry it on and then we'll <laughs> Mario and Luigi have got mustaches so we'll we'll create Mario carts and run around in those and and Matt bless him he's a really talented little artist and he'd made these proper Mario carts and they were absolutely brilliant were so they, we've been we've been the poster boys for run through for the full 12 months were they as sore though as as we were kind of made to believe with the bouncing yeah. on the shoulder <laughs> yeah. yeah proper chaff yeah the chaff was definitely real but they were very, quite lightweight as well. They looked yeah. amazing. They looked so good. Right. They did look so good, and it makes me. I've I've run, I've only run once in in fancy dress, and I have thought, you know what, that looks that looks quite good fun. Maybe I'll do that. And then having seen someone dressed at the weekend as Pikachu for five k, these people have actually maybe got something. Run run for fun instead of, like you said before, running balls to the wall your heart racing and bursting out your mouth and not really enjoying it and then going, you know what, I'm going to do that again, but maybe dressing up and enjoying it. Yeah, definitely. But variety is, is a spice life. Definitely. You know, I've, yeah, I've, definitely. I've done a few dressing ups myself um, over the years <laughs> and it's, it's always, always been fun. Have you got any events signed up for this year for make a wish? No, not this year. Not um, this year. I, I, I did have an opportunity to go to Chicago and make a wish in September. Um, but I think I'm going to try and do that next year. So a bit of a spoiler essentially there, but, um, but I've, I've got quite a lot going on personally as well. So obviously I've got Manchester coming up yeah. in the next sort of six weeks, but then um, I'm finally biting the bullet and getting married. So that's, uh, that's later on this year. So um, yeah, I, I've been sticking a marathon in yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's getting a divorce in the same year as well. So, yeah. yeah, quite possibly. You've done... So you've done London, you've done Berlin, and if you wanted to do Chicago, that, that would get you 
three, isn't it? You're not you're not any higher than that. You're not done like New York or anything, have you? No, not yet. But you know, <laughs> it, when you start racking those up again, that's just one of those things that I didn't plan to do that. But then when you get oh, actually, that there might be three stars in the bag. And one of my pals from my local running club, he's just about to move to Tokyo. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Casual, casual uh, visit to Tokyo to see a friend or, you know, what, honeymoon in New York? Yeah, potentially. potentially. Yeah. You get yeah. in there and then you can sign up. You can get the last one easy, don't you? You get the last uh, bite of the cherry super easy. And Sorry about that. It's, I'm pretty sure that's a takeaway just arriving. <laughs> Um, Somebody's at the front door. Thank you. Uh, right, so where have we got to? You've done your crazy back to backs with uh, Make a Wish. You're not doing anything this year because you've got priorities. Uh, we've covered how you got started, we've covered a little bit about Pendle. Um, so let's talk about Manchester, your next your next big event. Yeah. That, yeah right. Yeah. How's training been going? Training has been going exceptionally well. Um, I, we've so one of our good friends, Jack. He's um, he's part of the What the Fight Like team, and he's he's embarked on a, his own kind of running coach journey. And he's really passionate. He's really good. I, I've used running coaches before, um, and I've always had a really good experience. Um, but this time, we, we tried to do something a little bit different. And uh, myself and a couple of pals, Neil and, and Matt, are, are doing the same plan for the same time in the same race. And um, there's something about that that's that's kind of spurred us all on. So, you know, we're all at different points in the country as well. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's it's just really good having that that sense of camaraderie between between pals. And we're all of a similar running ability as well. Um, Matt's probably the, the fastest one. But, um, but yeah. It, Is that because he's compressed, that, though, that, compared yeah. to you and Neil? He's just compressed yeah. down. I think that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least you and his legs joking. have to go twice as fast. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you're making a joke, now, Steve. That's good. That's good. You make a change for me being mean to him. Um, I don't. I don't know the man, and I'm being mean to him for for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's standard. It's standard. Um, but yeah, I, the training has been going well up until yesterday. I'm just a little bit tight, and um, as I said in kind of the preamble, the first 15k felt comfortable at, at sort of the 90 minute pace. Uh, but I had to ease off a little bit for the for the last five, kind of live to yeah. fight another day. So, um, yeah, I, I'm I'm optimistic for for this one. But I think this this feels like the last time that I want to run this fast. There's a hell of a lot gone into this, and there's a hell of a lot of commitment to it. And you know what? If I get there, great. If I don't, then then I'll know that I've given it kind of my best shot. It is your ultimate a goal, isn't it? Though you're you're aiming for. Well, something you guys have been aiming for for a while now. Yeah, yeah. And it's the best, you're in the best possible situation. You've got a coach that you know and you obviously trust quite well and you've got a team of people running with you. Now, obviously the weekend as well, that was like a, a dry run at, at mm. a, a, a proper event of we're going at the same pace, we'll do the best we can. And if anything, to get a bit of tightness in your calf is better to get it now get it sorted, line up for Manchester and have fingers crossed, no niggles, easy mode, get it done. Yeah, that, that's the plan. That's the one. I, I, I don't think you'll ever get to the start line when you're pushing your body to that extreme, having no niggles. I think that's, it's just making sure you get to the start line in, in those situations. But, uh, yeah, but yeah let, let's see, let's see what it brings. And, you know, either way, I, I'll know, I'll know that I've given, given it my best shot. So what, what is the time goal? Is it something that you, that you have, yeah, I think you have put it out there, but is it something? Yeah, that yeah, to, it's to no secret. No? Well, to be to be fair, my my PB is three twenty five from London a couple of years ago, and yeah. um, I've been close again since. And you know, we've had a quite a lofty goal of three fifteen. You know, I feel like it's in the wheelhouse. Um, but after after Manchester last year and the four forty, I kind of watered that down to three twenty. So. I think it's gone. It's tipping back up to the three fifteen sort of time. Um, so yeah, that that is the a goal. Oh, and then BB it, goals are PB, and then nah, exactly. You'll you've always got a C goal to finish, haven't you? Yeah, no, I never, I never ever think like that. I'm, I'm normally just if I don't get my A goal, I'm disappointed, frustrated, and I never think what's the B and C goal. Um, I, I'm, I'm not that level of runner that has the sense. 
I'm not that smart up here <laughs> to have a fallback. So make no bones about it. If it's not a goal, I'm disappointed. But I think yeah, yeah. you know, I, I see people like on 10k races just stopping and then turning back. I'm like, you do realize you've paid for this and there's a medal at the end when you finish. <laughs> you know, that I'm not not getting that. Even if I had to walk to the finish, I'll, I'll definitely finish it. Well, I, again, I can't say on that because we didn't get medals yesterday. They're getting sent to us in the post. We got biscuits oh, instead. <laughs> That's just not acceptable. <laughs> it's not acceptable, especially when it was the Scottish Championships of all things as well. Wow. And you end of you end the race, and only the guys on the podium are getting medals. And you're like, "Sod this! I got a biscuit." That's so, that almost sounds like a, a non-runners catered for that event. Well, you didn't come in the top three. You don't get a medal. You just get some biscuits. There you go. <laughs> You'll be hoping for something a little bit more substantial for the end yeah. of Manchester. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and 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 one of them might even be a beer because I've been completely teetotal yeah, since you've been years, so. You did mention that as well as you had a laugh with Rob that what's this horrible Erdinger stuff that you get at the end of a of a half marathon or marathon, and mm. now you've taken up the alcohol free training method. How's that feeling? I'm really good. I'm still not drinking the Erdinger because it's still <laughs> grotesque, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I'm not actually missing drinking. I'm definitely not missing what a hangover feels like in the three days that ensue after that. So um, yeah, I, th I think there's definitely going to be a change moving forward. I, I, I don't think you know drinking to, to excess will be something that I do too often. But um, but yeah, especially at forty, it's maybe maybe those days have come yeah. and gone. Yeah, M maybe <laughs> maybe finally growing up. We'll never say never, you know. We'll see at the finish line of Manchester when someone passes me a beer. I might, I might be tempted, so we'll see. Perfect. It's definitely working. I'm definitely, you know, in probably You're the best seeing the change. For a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. It does help, doesn't it? Just a change in diet and a change of, of outlook can, can do wonders. Right. Let's think about starting to wrap things up. Um, I mentioned in the intro there that you're you're not just what the fart lick you had. Uh, what did what do we call it? Because I had to do a little bit of searching this because I never listened to it. Although I'm tempted to go back and listen to it. football pundit imposters podcast. Oh, that was that was just a little side project, me and Rob. Yeah, had, we both I was going to say it's football. Yeah. Nothing since 2022, 2020. Uh, yeah, end of 2022, maybe. Yeah, there's only so much podcast that you can <laughs> you can handle. And uh, I think I think the way that the community's kind of developed with what the fire like, you know, there's a lot more time spent in that. And yeah. me and Rob just, uh, you know, we can chat football anytime. We don't need to air that. Um, so yeah, so all all things have gone into the what the fire like podcast. And so no no that no community. no plan of a return there, a sneaky return to something. Again, never say never, but um, but yeah, at, at the minute it's it's all sticking to to the running. <laughs> oh well, like I mean. It's been very here and there from me, I would say, on this one. But um, I think we've covered we've covered a lot of what you've you've kind of looked you've done with Make a Wish, an insane amount of uh, challenges last year with your back to back, your four for forty, and then following that up with Berlin as well. You're never doing an ultra again to then signing up for Pendle and doing that again. Um. But you're doing, you're like, I follow you on Strava. You're smashing everything you do, obviously, when you've not got a tight calf as well. Um, and I'm enjoying following your story. So I'm looking forward to seeing how you get on with Manchester. I, I do fully believe that you're going to do wonders. Uh, as long as Matt doesn't trip you up or get in your way or just sprint off and leave you, leave you in the dust from everything that I've heard on WTF in the past. Uh, no, I truly think you're going to do, you're going to do wonders this year, mate. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for having me. Well, thank you very much. Um, you don't have another another podcast now, do you? You guys are finished. Yeah, we're just gonna just gonna have a little bit of time off, and then we'll be back. What um, am I gonna do now for the next couple of weeks? I said, there's a full back catalogue you can watch. It's a full football back, back 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 catalogue. Oh well, <laughs> I spot on, mate. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Yes. I'm gonna say it. That was definitely not my best showing as an interviewer yet. I did, however, love having a good chat with JP, even if there were quite a few references to his previous episode on the WTF. I'm glad we managed to have a brief chat about his 4 for 40 challenge though. 
that he undertook not only to celebrate turning 40, but also to help raise valuable funds for the Make a Wish Foundation. If there was one positive takeaway from our chat, it would be that I've given him a tasty piece of information on the editing front and something that might make his life a whole lot easier going forward if he takes it up. Courtesy and in relay from Ryan Miller's previous tip to both myself and runner man Steve when we first started out. Telling you now, next week I'm going back to my usual more laid back and relaxed form as I welcome a good friend to the hot seat. The announcement on who that might be will of course come on Monday. Before I go and hide and hang my interviewing hat up in shame, I'll first run the outro. If you liked what you heard today, and you probably didn't given the state of that mess, the best way to support the podcast is to do what you've done today. Download, stream and listen to the show. A quick share with your family and friends will of course help a lot or a share on social media alongside a tag back to the show's page. These are just a couple of the ways that you can support the show for free. If you'd like to show your physical support for the podcast, you can, of course, purchase a T-shirt from our merchandise partners over at Twisted Running. All proceeds stay with Twisted and help them grow their brand to do more valuable collaborations with other running groups and podcasts like ourselves. I've said it weekly now, the quality of their products is second to none, and I'm not getting paid to say that I do use my own money to buy the T-shirts that you see me wearing and you saw me wearing at the half marathon at the weekend. So all positives I have to say there. You can also find a direct link to the Twisted 99 page on our website, thepoint99podcast.com or by googling Twisted Running. Popping over to their Instagram and dropping them a follow would also be a great thing to do. The show is, however, available on all major podcast platforms. So if your friends and family don't like using Apple or hate using Spotify, there's always an alternative for them. You can also find every episode streamable on our website as well via the Inbuilt player. Finally, we're on both Instagram and Facebook. Just search The Point 99 Podcast if you'd like to follow what I'm doing over on either of those. If you want to get in touch, you can always leave me a comment on any of the posts, drop a direct message to The Point 99 Podcast page or to my very own at Mr. Underscore Steve Underscore Runs. Or finally, you can drop me an email at The Point 99 Podcast. That's 99 at gmail.com. As always, I can't thank you all enough for tuning in today. You're making this hobby more enjoyable by the week, even if this week I'm a little bit more ashamed. But yeah, your feedback, your support and your love does make it all worthwhile. So until the next time, I hope you stay safe, enjoy your runs and you will hear from me soon.